This is Nico Robin. Her likes include archeology, span morbid jokes, and grabbing men by their ancient ruins. Her dislikes include chewing gum, tomatoes, and transforming robots. Now the world government has valued Robin at an outrageous 130 million berries. Outrageous because this number is profoundly incorrect. So today we are going to discover Robin's true bounty, and I promise that it is going to blow you away. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are here to continue our ongoing investigation into the true bounties of the One Piece world. Because as we all know by now, the world government tends to get things just a little bit wrong because they operate with incomplete information and conflicting political motivations. And that secondary reason is going to be very important in this particular case. Perhaps even more so than Chopper, Nico Robin is shockingly undervalued. And I think that we may actually be in store for the most colossal bounty increase that we've seen in this video series to date. Because as it turns out, Nico Robin is pretty damn threatening to the world government. Before we do that though, it's time for a quick round of Rob in or Rob out, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Aboard the Thousand Sunny, we are approaching Robin's quarters in order to ask a question. As such, we knock on the door, but will she be there or not? AKA, will she be Rob in the room or Rob out of the room? It is your job to choose one of these answers, and if you are incorrect, then your punishment will be subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in regular Robin content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then Robin will grant you a dos fleur grab. So make your choice now. Will she be Rob in or Rob out? And we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, she's Robin. Obviously, otherwise we'd have, to, we'd have to change the name, wouldn't we? So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know the thing to do, and please do comment below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. Semi-serious business time now, because we have fictional bounties to discuss. And Robin begins in a very unique place compared to the rest of the Straw Hats, and even compared to the rest of One Piece characters in general, having been awarded her first ever bounty at the tender young age of eight years old. That canon number was 79 million berries, and it's obviously because Robin was a survivor of the Ohara incident, the sole survivor I should say, which is already bad for the world government because Robin could easily reveal that they basically instigated, you know, a bit of a genocide. So that's pretty bad press. But what's worse for the world government is that after this incident, Robin became the only known person in this world who was capable of reading the ancient language, making Robin the key to pretty much every major mystery and dark secret in One Piece. So not only is she capable of unveiling the evils of the world government, but she's also theoretically capable of discovering the true history of the Void Century, and it has been implied that the world government were very, very naughty during that time. And as such, I really do call this initial number of 79 million berries into question. And there's a couple of potential explanations for this, the first of which is that the world government were unaware at this stage anyway, that Robin could read the ancient language, and the bounty is based solely on being an Ohara survivor. With that in mind, they did still label her as a demon child and state that the scholars of Ohara were trying to revive the ancient weapons, implying that Robin was part of that effort. Which is kind of interesting, because the other explanation I have is that the world government did know about Robin's ability, but they were keeping that hidden so as not to give away information regarding the Poneglyphs, the Void Century, etc., or to make Robin a target for candidates who could quite legitimately make use of her skills. Because at this point, Roger had only died two years prior and the race for the Pirate King was in full swing. However, I find it very hard to buy into that as well because once again, the world government claimed that she was part of an effort to revive the ancient weapons, which most certainly made Robin a target as we will see shortly. But even if Robin is an eight-year-old, effectively defenseless young girl, there is no way that 79 million berries accurately represents the threat that she poses. And as such, we are going to start Robin right out of the gate with 500 million berries. And yeah, that's a lot. But when this one girl has the power to unveil over 800 years of corruption and lies, which would inevitably lead to the downfall of the entire world government as we know it, I do think that's a pretty damn serious threat. And to be clear, this number isn't coming out of nowhere. It's not arbitrary. I'm actually basing it on the Charlotte Lin Lin number. Whilst Lin Lin was even younger than Robin, she received a bounty of 500 million berries because she was unstoppable in terms of raw power. And Robin acts as very much the inverse of Lin Lin. Robin has no power, but she does have knowledge capable of toppling the world government in the same way that Lin Lin has the brute strength to threaten such an event. And as such, I think this equivalency works out pretty well. So 500 million berries it is. And now we're going to skip quite a few years of Robin related existence, but at the age of 23, Robin would meet with one Sir Crocodile, a warlord of the sea who had plans to locate and wield the ancient weapon Pluton. And he he then hired Robin to assist him in doing so, an alliance that, you know, may never have been formed if the world government didn't lie about the Oharan scholars wanting to revive the ancient weapons. It's funny how things like that turn out. It's one of those really interesting parts of One Piece where the world government just really shot themselves in the foot there. And of course, all of this was completely unknown to them, as Robin worked with Crocodile and his organization Baroque Works for four whole years. However, the major premise of the True Bounty series is that the world government knows everything, and an alliance of a now much older and more capable Nika Robin would summon the world government 
government had deemed so threatening that they made him a warlord of the sea is grand cause for concern. I mean, granted it is a bit weird to consider the hypothetical because if the world government did know then Crocodile would likely be stripped of his title, but let's forget all about that problem for now. Because here we have two reasons to raise Robin's bounty. The first of which is that she is now a legitimate threat in the realm of combat as well as knowledge. She is not someone that your average Marine or even average band of hundreds of Marines could deal with. So for this alone, we are going to award her with a 30 million increase, which is based on the East Blue Luffy threat number. It basically indicates that this person is getting a little bit out of control in terms of power and even in the Grand Line, we should not be overlooking them. And the second reason to raise Robin's bounty is of course her alliance with Sir Crocodile. Because whether Robin was intending to or not, she did put him within one step of obtaining Pluton, which would have quite radically reshaped the world as we know it. And this alliance is going to earn Robin a further 80 million berries, which is taken directly from Crocodile's bounty prior to becoming a warlord. And to be honest, this may even be underestimating things quite a bit because once again, this alliance was one short step away from reviving Pluton. That threat level is very, very real. However, I will settle for adding the value Crocodile provides directly to Robin, leaving her with a total of 610 million berries. Well, that's pretty massively high already, but we still have a long way to go. So four years later, Crocodile is defeated by Monkey D. Luffy and friends of Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy, eventually resulting in Robin making the decision to join the Straw Hat Pirates. Making that decision before the captain had even considered it, really. Robin is a woman of initiative after all. However, at this stage, I don't think this event in and of itself is called to raise Robin's bounty any further. If anything, the Straw Hat Pirates weren't anywhere near as threatening to the world government as Baroque works were. So if there was a mechanism to actually decrease bounties, that may even be a consideration here. But since there isn't, we're not going to do that. And also because of a slightly bigger problem, because you know it is up for consideration. After Alabaster, Robin knows where Pluton is. She is quite possibly the only person in the world who has knowledge of where this ancient weapon is located. And since the world governments know that in this scenario, look, I'd be pretty seriously crapping my pants if I were them. And just how much is Pluton worth in terms of berries? Well, that's pretty tough to quantify, especially since we're just talking about the hypothetical threat of Robin seeking it. But what's really interesting is that at this point, the world government have kind of become a self-fulfilling prophecy machine. They lied about O'Hara's goal to revive the ancient weapons. And now as a direct result of that lie, Robin is in a position to do exactly that. And I know these numbers are probably getting a little absurd, but I don't see this as anything less than a 300 million berry increase. And that still may be too conservative. But once again, I do draw this basis from canon, being Luffy's post any slobby bounty. After managing to orchestrate an event destroying an entire island, this one man was valued at 300 million berries, and Pluton holds that exact same island destroying power, just, you know, more of it. So I don't see why we shouldn't add that direct value to Robin at this point, given that she is essentially threatening to revive Pluton at any point, which will take her to a startling total of 910 million berries. Yep, almost at the billion mark already, and it's just Alabaster. You know what the highest known bounty at this point in the series was? It was Luffy with 100 million berries. So we're just going to rather casually decimate that. As we move on to Jaya and Skypea now, and quite frankly, there is pretty much nothing Robin can do to increase her bounty via the threat of strength. So yeah, she can beat Yama and whoever else she wants, but that 910 number, well, that ain't moving. Crucially, however, during Skypea, Robin discovers another Poneglyph, which just so happens to reveal the location of another ancient weapon, this time being Poseidon. So at this point, there is one woman in the world who has the potential to uncover the Void Sentry and knows where two of the three ancient weapons are. Holy crap, Robin is so, so, so much more important than she has ever been made out to be. How do we quantify this though? Well, the number is going to be less than the 300 million edition for Pluton, mostly because Poseidon is a living being, so you can't just pop down to Fisherman Island and wield it. And that does actually make this event significantly less threatening, but the knowledge is pretty undeniable. So we will award a third of the Pluton fee being 100 million, taking post Skypea Robin to 1 billion and 10 million berries. Back to the blue sea now, we have Long Ring Longland, and <laughs> that's a whole lot of nothing, which takes us into Robin's entire saga of Water 7. And even though it's all about her, not a lot is going to change bounty wise at this point. I guess the primary issue is that Robin is very passive for this entire section of story. She's not really actually responsible for anything that happens that's more up to Luffy and the rest of the Straw Hats. And the outcome of this saga does put Robin in the exact same spot as she was before the saga, in terms of threat anyway. She is still a member of the Straw Hats and she still has all of her prior knowledge with no new knowledge. So the events of Water 7 and Any Slobby are more about displaying the true threat of the other crew members. So here we're just gonna keep Robin sitting tight at her 1 billion and 10 million berries. And this will continue on through Thriller Bark. I should say that I usually would increase a bounty here for being part of an effort that defeated Gekko Moria, Warlord of the Sea. However, once you're past the billion berry mark, I really do think that we're done playing with these minor association fees. You really do need to be part of a much more monumental effort to increase your bounty via this method from here on out. Which I believe brings us to Sabadee, where Robin
Robin takes a hiatus for the Paramount War saga, and then we leap straight into the time skip. And very importantly, Robin spends two years with the Revolutionary Army. Now it's unclear whether the world government are aware of this in the series and to what extent, but they certainly are in this video and this, well, this is their worst nightmare. The one person in the world who can now bring down the world government in like three different ways is joining forces with the organization whose aim is to do exactly that. If Robin so chose to, she could tell Dragon where the first two ancient weapons are and bam, revolution over and successful. Bye bye, world government. So as an official associate of the Revolutionary Army, Robin's threat level skyrockets because this is not a what if anymore, it is very much a reality. And that reality is going to smack us all in the face with a further 500 million berries. The world shaking Big Mom fee. Because Robin and Dragon are quite possibly the most dangerous team that the world government have ever seen, taking Robin up to 1.5 billion and 10 million berries. After reuniting with the Straw Hats, we dive down to Fishman Island where Robin meets the anthropomorphic ancient weapon Poseidon and some value will be recovered from this. As a result of making friends with said weapon, we are going to add the 200 million berries that we were missing from Pluton's fee because Robin is now BFFs with Poseidon. And that's pretty dangerous. Taking things up to a total of 1.7 billion and 10 million berries. Punk Hazard and Dress Rosa are going to be non-events for this video. Once again, I'd usually add an association fee to any straw hat post Dress Rosa. But look, when you're at 1.7 billion already, you're just going to need to be part of something much bigger than the defeat of a puny warlord. Which does occur on Zo, an arc that we would usually skip because it does nothing for any of the straw hats with the sole exception of Robin. Here, Robin discovers a rogue poneglyph, thus making her aware of the existence of the other three, which will tell her exactly how to get to Laugh Tale and make Luffy the Pirate King. If the alarm bells could be rung even louder than they already were, then they would be. This one individual is now threatening to destroy the world government in like four different ways because the crowning of a new Pirate King is not good for them, not good at all. So we're going to consider this Pirate King threat on the scale of that of an ancient weapon and add another 300 million berries to Robin's bounty, giving us a mighty 2 billion and 10 million berries. After which point we head to Whole Cake Island where Robin isn't involved and this is another place where Straw Hats would usually take in some sort of association fee, but two billion berries, ugh. Crashing an Emperor's Tea Party doesn't quite move that needle. Although the discovery of their second road poneglyph might. Another piece of the Laugh Tale puzzle is worth no less than 100 million, bringing Robin's total true bounty to this point in the series to two billion, 110 million berries. And I think this is pretty right. Robin is quite possibly the single most threatening person on the planet to the world government, more so than Luffy because he needs her to become the Pirate King, and more so than Dragon because as far as we know, her knowledge dwarfs out of his organization. Whatever the case, I think we can all agree that 130 million berries is a bad, bad joke. If the world government knew the full extent of what we do, and if they were serious about the threat that Robin presents, she would easily be the second most valuable straw hat. But that will probably never come to pass, which is why we need videos like this. And if you'd like to check out more true bounties, then please do feel free to watch Chopper's video because he has quite a fascinating journey. And please do comment with your thoughts below or even join the discussion on our Discord server. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.